Today we are going to be discussing the rock cycle. Go ahead and open up your earth science review packet and turn to page three. Now you're going to have to turn this page so it's like the landscape way and notice that there's a lot of definitions that are written along the border of the sheet. So in the center you see igneous, sedimentary, magma, lava, and metamorphic. But then notice along the outside of the sheet you have things like weathering and erosion on the top left, deposition on the top right, you have heat and pressure and melting on the bottom right, and you have volcanic activity on the bottom left. You will be writing definitions in each of these areas. So let's just first start with what are rocks? A rock is a naturally occurring solid mixture of one or more materials or minerals or organic matter. Now when we talk about the rock cycle, what we're really talking about is we're talking about rocks changing form. So rocks can actually change from one type of form to another. Now notice that material is never created or destroyed, it's just changing forms through geologic processes. So the rocks either being broken down or melted or um, pressurized together. So let's look at this broken down piece. I want you to look at the top left-handed side of your sheet. You'll see it says weathering and erosion. What is weathering and erosion? This image here is actually showing you weathering and erosion. You can see that the Sphinx over time has actually begun to erode. Notice that the nose is now missing from the top of the Sphinx. Notice that the wind has actually removed some of the rocks from the side of the Sphinx. This is weathering and erosion. I want you to find both of these words in your note taking sheet. Weathering is the breaking down of rock. So whenever something is being broken down, we call it weathering. Erosion, erosion is something different. Erosion is when that rock actually starts to move. So the rock can move through water, it can move because of the wind, but erosion is the movement of one rock from one place to another. Let's look at this in a little bit more detail. Here I have a little link for us. And what we're going to do here is we're going to look at weathering. So notice here you can see that there's all these little pieces of rock and they have begun to break down or weather due to acid rain. Then you can also have biological weathering, right? You can have plants that will actually break apart pieces of rock. Humans might break apart pieces of rock. Or as the rock actually rolls down the hill, it might break into pieces too. All of these are forms of weathering. Now, please notice, the moment that rock begins to move, this is now called erosion. Remember that erosion is the movement of one rock from one place to another. Now let's look on the top right-handed side of your sheet. You will see on the top right-handed side of your sheet, it says deposition. What is deposition? Well, a rock can't be rolling or moving for forever, right? You can't have the rock blowing through the wind or riding on the waves of a lake or a river. Eventually, it's going to stop movement, and that is deposition. Deposition is the point at which sediment or material is actually laid down. Make sure you'd write the definition for deposition on your note-taking sheet, too. Let's look at an example of deposition. So remember, deposition is actually the laying down of sediment. So here we can see we have a river and we can see that fragments of rock are actually being transported by the river down. This right here is showing you erosion. The moment though that those pieces of rock actually stop moving and settle and they actually build up layers, this is called deposition. The actual cementing of the rocks together is called sedimentary rock. So again, if you look at this graphic, you can see you have erosion occurring as sediment of rock is being moved through a river. The moment those rock fragments are not being moved anymore and they're being deposited, we call it deposition. Over thousands of years, the rock fragments will actually build up into layers, and this is called sedimentary rock because these fragments are then compressed together over time. Let's talk about a different way that rock can change form. Let's talk about hot rock. Look on the bottom of your note-taking sheet. It's on the bottom left, and you'll see that it says volcanic activity. What is volcanic activity? Volcanic activity is looking at magma or lava that rises to the Earth's surface and becomes solid rock. 
we can have two different types of volcanic activity occurring. We can have uh, extrusive igneous rock or intrusive igneous rock. Let's first look at the intrusive one. The intrusive one are the rocks that are actually underneath the Earth's surface. Sometimes you have a little bit of a dike form. What happens is the magma moves into one area underground and it'll actually begin to cool there. And when the magma cools, it crystallizes underground, becoming intrusive igneous rock. Let's look at extrusive igneous rock. Here, this would be the volcano actually erupting and the magma spilling out onto the Earth's surface. When this magma spills out onto the Earth's surface, it will eventually cool. And when it cools, it forms extrusive rock. When this cools, you can see that we have crystals form also. This is volcanic activity. Now let's look at the bottom right-handed side of your sheet. Let's talk about melting, heat, and pressure. So look at these two pictures. One is showing you melting and one is showing you the effects of heat and pressure. What is heat and pressure? Heat and pressure is the change of composition of what the rock is made out of due to heat and pressure actually forcing the particles closer together. And melting, melting is a change of state, right? We learned about this. Melting is a change of state from a solid to a liquid. Make sure you define both of these terms on the bottom right-handed side of your sheet. So let's look at this. Let's look at the for, um, heat and pressure acting on a rock. You can see here that the earth is actually pushing heat and pressure onto the surrounding rock. This pressure actually pushes the layers on the rock, making things align into nice straight lines. When we look at rocks that are created from heat and pressure, we call them metamorphic rocks. And oftentimes you can see banding in these metamorphic rocks due to the pressure of the rocks being pushed together. We've kind of started talking about it already, so let's dive in. Let's actually start talking about the different types of rocks that we can have in our rock cycle. So we've now talked about things like weathering and erosion, deposition. We've talked about heat and melting. And we've also talked about pressure. We're going to talk about the types of rocks now that form from this. Igneous rock, sedimentary rock, and metamorphic rock. Let's start with igneous rock. On your note-taking sheet, you will see a box that looks just like this. What is igneous rock? Igneous rock is rock that is formed from magma or lava cooling. The word igneous literally means fire. So you can have igneous rock, we have now learned, that will actually cool extrusive, which means that it is on the Earth's surface. So this is a rock that's actually being erupted from the volcano and cooling on the Earth's surface. Or you can have rock that is intrusive. Remember that this is a type of rock that forms inside of the Earth. Make sure you write all of these things in the box on your note-taking sheet. When we talk about igneous rock, you need to remember that it's formed from molten rock that is cooled. We classify igneous rock by its crystal size. We can have intrusive or extrusive. And igneous rock actually creates long-lasting landforms here on Earth. So some examples of igneous rock would be things like granite, pumice, or obsidian. Now let's look at examples of igneous rock. Pumice, maybe you use it to scrub your feet. Granite, or basalt. Now let's look at sedimentary rock. Sedimentary rock is a rock that is made out of pieces of rocks that have now been pressed together. So when we talk about, remember, weathering and erosion, this is pieces of rock that are being broken down and then transported. The moment they are deposited and pressed together over time, they become sedimentary rock. When we look at sedimentary rock, let's look at an example of it. Example of sedimentary rock could be like chimney rock in Nebraska. Sedimentary rock is oftentimes made up of pieces of other things, like we see things like shell in them or clay in them. There might be mud. We see things like sand or fossils or pebbles. Sedimentary rock, let's look at some characteristics of it. 
Sedimentary rock is formed from loose particles that are pressed together or cemented into layers over time. These rocks are made up of a lot of different things. It can be pieces of rock, it can be minerals, it can be actual peat, which would be plant products, or animal remains like fossils. Oftentimes, sedimentary rock can give us insight about past weather conditions here on Earth, and they can tell us about what kind of organisms might have once lived and now are extinct. Examples of sedimentary rock would be limestone, limestone, coal, shale, and sandstone. Here are some examples of sedimentary rock. You can have a conglomerate, you can have coal, or you can have shale. Now, let's look on the bottom left-handed side of your sheet. Let's look at magma and lava. Magma and lava. This is the liquid rock inside and outside of the earth. And remember, when magma is and when it's inside the earth, we call it magma. And if it's outside of the earth, we call it lava. Now let's look at another term, metamorphic rocks. Metamorphic rocks is on the bottom right-handed side of your sheet. A metamorphic rock is igneous or sedimentary rock that has undergone heat and pressure over a period of time. This heat and pressure ends up creating metamorphic rock. When you look at metamorphic rock, remember, you can actually oftentimes see the direction in which the heat and pressure was coming from. So you can see that the rock was being compressed together right here, creating this banding, and then it kind of lifted it. You can see the same thing here and here. When we talk about metamorphic rock, it is created due to extreme heat and pressure. The original rock is metamorphized, so the parent rock is actually changed into something different. So an example of this would be like slate and shale, or marble and quartz. With the rock in which that the metamorphic rock is formed from is called the parent rock or ancestor. Examples of metamorphic rock would be slate, marble, and genus. When we look at metamorphic rocks, here are some examples. Tomorrow we will be investigating the rock cycle by doing an activity called Roll the Dice.